you guys doing? Good, good. Dave Blanca trying to help me back here. <laughs> Over here with a quick dry hump. <laughs> uh huh. All that new junk in the trunk. You trying to get your fill off. Thanks, Dave. John, right. listen, I imagine we'll be uh, inducting you again at some point down the road. I do want to ask you, John Jones, UFC Hall of Famer, how does that sound to you? It, it feels really cool. It feels really cool. Um, it's been a long time since I've gotten any type of, like, awards or anything like that outside of getting new belts. And uh, this is a different feeling, and uh, I'm very honored, very grateful. I feel, like, more established in a way, and uh, it's just really cool. So I was, I was want to ask you how you felt about that first fight with Alex, right? Because I've heard some people say, worst night of your career because it was the night you got pushed and tested for the first time. I've heard other people say, best night of your career. You showed up on a night where you didn't have your best, you still gutted out and found a way to win. Yeah. How do you look at it? Uh, you know, it was cool because I got to almost take an L without actually losing. You know, a lot of people say that I had lost that fight. And, um, and it was great to come so close without actually losing. It, you know, people say things like, uh, you never really become the fighter that you can be until you lose and you learn so much. You only can learn when you lose. And in a way, I did lose without actually losing. So I got to learn a lot that night and I was really excited. I also got to figure out where my heart lies and where my, um, where my like resilience lies. You know, that, there's uh, many times in the fight where I could have just went through that door of quitting and I, I refused. You know, I, I dug deep and I. And I brought out a little extra out of myself when things got really difficult. So I was grateful to see that. And uh, yeah, it was just a great, great fight. We got that famous photo in the hospital that night as well. Can you, can you tell me what that moment was like and that conversation was like? Because here you go yeah. from rivals, you know, to, to now you're in a hospital yeah. together, right? Yeah, yeah. So Gustafson and I, we did a, a big tour leading up to our fight. And so we actually spent a lot of time together. And I felt like we hit it off a lot. You know, we, we laughed and joked about a lot of different things uh, before we actually fought each other. And uh, Obviously, when the fight began, we both wanted the same thing was that championship, so we fought like dogs. But right after, I think it was easy to remember all the time we spent together and uh, and just that good energy we had between each other. So that picture was a must. We were both all busted up, and for sure, it became a classic photo. And that, that was a great 205-pound fight. You do not look like you're ready for a 205-pound fight anytime <laughs> yeah, soon, my yeah, man. Yeah, not anymore. It was the other day. We heard 260. Is that yeah, accurate? yeah. Right now, I'm about 255, and I feel really great. Uh, my goal is to get up to 270 pounds. My goal is to be uh, the most technical, the most uh, well-conditioned, the strongest uh, out of all the heavyweights. That's that's what I want. I want to take over all across the, all across the board, and that's what I'm going to continue working for. So um, I'm very patient, and uh, I know I have several more months of work to do. And if anyone's impressed with the way I look today, I can't wait till they see me when I get back in there because I'm just planning on doing so much more. I think the concern is right cardio, right? We think about you being able to go five rounds. We think about you being slick, moving. Is there any concern at all that you get too big and some of that goes away? No. So uh, before before I would uh, I would start training about ten weeks before a fight, and I would try to get my body fat down and my cardio up and my skills together. And right now, for the first time in my whole career, I'm actually training consistently. So I believe that my cardio is fight worthy right now. And when I get in camp, it's going to go to an even higher level. I feel in better shape now than I've ever did before. I'm sleeping better, eating better, drinking less alcohol, and uh, and uh, and I feel really good. <laughs> we're trying to we're trying to get our 2021 calendar figured out, man. So okay. can you let us know what date do we pencil in that John Jones fight? Oh July? man, we need to know exactly kind of when it's happening. I, I think it'll be sometime in the second quarter of 2022. Yeah, are, I mean, are we still title fighter bust? There's no other fights that would make sense. It has to be a title fight. You know, uh, fighting for the title. Yeah, fighting for the title is what I want the most. Yeah, for sure. I want to fight the biggest fights, and I think the title fights are going to be the biggest fights. If there were someone that was a bigger star than Francis at heavyweight who didn't have the title, then I would go for that. But I think Francis is the biggest star at heavyweight. Him and I, and. Um, and he has the title, so that's what I want. And last thing for me, that's what I wonder. Like, if for some reason Cyril Gaon happens to walk away with that title, you know what I mean? Like, of course, it would be great to get that belt, but as you said, Nagano star power. Even Stipe, who's uh, widely regarded as the greatest of all time. So if Gaon wins the belt, does that change the focus a little bit? I think it changes uh, what, what the pay will be. Yeah, I don't think it's a mega fight, Cyril Gaon winning. I think he's so talented and he's great for the sport. I think he's very marketable. Um, 
but he's still relatively unknown to the general public. And so I'm excited for either challenge. I think they present two completely different puzzles. Um, but yeah, Francis is definitely a bigger star. It'd be a lot of money lost if, if Francis were to lose, but I don't care who wins the fight. I, I just want the championship. John, you mentioned money. Dane has not exactly been quiet about our job. John loves the other wild of money, blah, blah. Is there a risk that you go to negotiate and you guys can't get to the other and you're just stuck out for even longer? Um, no, Dana, Dana, he guaranteed me that he would give me an increase uh, in my next fight. So I'm really excited about that. I think it's going to be pay-per-view based. So I'm going to have to work for the money that I get. I'm going to have to sell the fight. I, mean, I think that's something I haven't been good at in the past. You know, you look at guys like McGregor who, who just talk so much shit and he's so good at it. <laughs> he's so good at it and so good at marketing himself. I have always just focused on winning. And uh, I think when I come back as a heavyweight, I'll try to do more legally controversial shit <laughs> uh, so, so, so that I can maybe sell a little more pay-per-view. What's, what's the relationship like with Dana right It's good. It's good. I think me hiring Richard Schaefer was one of the best decisions I've made. Um, instead of me getting on Twitter and attacking Dana and, you know, pouring my emotions out, uh, I just allowed Schaefer to get down to what's the most important in every situation and talk to the people that needs to be spoke to instead of me going back and forth with the fans on Twitter. So, relationship's good. Schaefer has really helped out a lot. Last thing for me, last thing for me. You know this fight with Alex? There's all these stories about people partying and all this. How bad was that training camp? The training camp was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the training camp was really bad. I, I really was partying a ton. And uh, I, I mean... What was the last time you partied with Oh man, I, I don't want to go back there, man. I, it's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time since I was, you know, living that type of life, and I try to leave it in the past, you know. But the second fight, how about that second fight? Huh? <laughs> I feel like I feel like it was a good indication huh, of, you know, my, my focus levels. <laughs> Anderson Silva's boxing match was was beautiful. I have no problem with Tito Ortiz, um, but I love Anderson, and uh, I was so proud of him to see him still hitting hard and just looking great. Yeah, yeah, still an inspiration, still inspiring me to this day. So thank you, Anderson. Thanks, Sean. Later, guys.